Black Ops 2 is the most realistic zombies experience because if I go to my friends list, it says I don't have any friends. With that out of the way, let's unlock the rarest Black Ops 2 zombies achievements on every map. If you like this video and want to see more, go ahead and like and subscribe. This will help me know what you want to see more of. We'll start with Transit, the map that really personifies why I always took the train home in college. The rarest achievement is Don't Fire Until You See, with a surprisingly high 5.52% completion percentage, which completely blows my mind. You have to open all doors without being set on fire. Anyone even remotely familiar with transit knows why that's a problem. Yes, you can cheese this with two players, but I'm not putting someone else through this hell. I started here in the bus depot, knifing some zombies, building everyone's favorite buildable, the turbine, grabbing quick revive, and buying the M14. After spending the first three rounds fighting off people calling me a racist for not giving them my university-issued public transportation card, I used the turbine to open the first two powered doors, attached the cow catcher to the bus, and bought the door into the bus depot. After cutting out several minutes of me waiting for Ted to get his legless ass moving, I rode the bus to the diner. I made my way out the back door and bought the diner door, which also opened the door on the other side of the building. I wanted to stay here and enjoy the transit loading screen music, but instead I opted to buy the door to the gas station and use my turbine on the door to the shed. After dicking around for a couple minutes waiting for the bus, I jumped back on so I could head to a scene more like home. I'll be honest with you all, I almost never spend any time here at the farm when I play transit normally. It's dark, the perk is in a less than ideal location, and my little sister was always scared when we played back in 2012. I used my turbine to open the two shed doors. Now this is the part where I failed my first attempt at this. There's a crack along the building, and you know what they say, step on a crack, burn your crack. But thankfully my dad shoes gave me the extra hop I needed, and I opened the back door. Thank you, Air Monarchs. I realized at the last second that I needed to catch the departing bus, so just like my time in the big city, I ran after it. This time I didn't get creamed by a taxi doing 70 in a 30 mile an hour zone. After a long ride through the cornfields, a familiar sight for any Midwest I arrived at the power station and farmed points to get inside. It's so weird using the M14 here on transit. I don't think I've ever bought it before on this map, but I needed to be extra careful not to kill any of the flaming zombies when they're close to me, just in case their explosions count as me being set on fire. I turned my brightness up before I started recording and holy shit did I regret that decision. As I worked on building the power, I heard the bus honking before I even got the first piece in. Does anyone notice that Ted never hangs out at the power station for long? Before activating the power, I used my turbine on the door that leads outside before setting it down at the most infamous pack-a-punch method in zombies history. I hoped that I wouldn't have to actually enter the pack-a-punch room or else I'd stick my wiener in the turbine fan. I turned on the power, releasing avocado, before heading outside. After a bunch of time fending off the undead with my newly purchased AK-74U, the bus finally showed up and I made my escape. Time for a night on the town, and thanks to the events of Moon, it's always night. I opened up the bank and immediately threw a grenade at the vault doors before taking a down from the zombie in my second grenade. Playing transit solo almost makes me want to take up drinking, so I bought the bar door, which also opens the other side. I made my way back to the stairs near the other end of town and opened the door to Juggernaut. I made one last jump over a crack before opening the final door with my turbine, unlocking the achievement. Next up, we have Die Rise and Shafted, and it's 1.31% completion rate. You need to use the Pack-a-Punch machine and all perk machines at least once in a game. Let's get vertical. I took the dumbest down in the world on a glitched out zombie at the top of the stairs that turned out to be a blessing. I got Perma Juggernaut, which gives me three hits instead of two in the next game. If you're not aware, in Black Ops 2, you got special upgrades that lasted for the game if certain criteria are met. This is probably because I recorded the buried achievement before this, but we'll get to that later. After wiring my brain to at least a functional level, I made sure I wasn't Stullinger because this map is way too spooky when you're playing as him, and began the process of moving the trample steam parts. If you walk slowly, you can keep rapidly pressing X square or whatever the hell it is on PC and swap between trample steam parts to this edge and drop them down to the correct floor, saving a lot of time. After repeating this until three of the pieces were on the correct floor, I lugged the final one of the old fashioned way, grabbing the first perk, which is quick revive. While I was building the trample steam, I accumulated a thousand points, which let me buy one of the best wall weapons in Black Ops 2 Zombies, the PDW 57. This little buddy and I would be best friends this game. I spent some time killing zombies in this area before making my way down the elevator shaft to the boot 
Fire Room. Unlike Mob, Buried, and Origins, I've had Die Rise since it came out back in 2013, but I still get lost to this day. I'm not a big fan of this map, but I still give Treyarch some credit. Even on bad maps back in the day like Die Rise and Transit, at least they tried something new. There's a lot more creativity than anything we got after Black Ops 4. I trained in the Buddha Room for a bit because buying the six perks on this map, hack a punching a gun, and opening the rest of the map isn't exactly cheap. After failing to jump to the upper level as always, I got lost before turning on the power, taking note that Juggernaut and Pack-a-Punch were by the power. If this was a normal game of Die Rise, then I couldn't have been happier. Well, as happy as one can be when they're playing Die Rise. I then crafted everyone's favorite goop shooting wonder weapon, the Sliquifier, before heading up to the roof. Sorry KT4, maybe next time. I spent round 5 on the roof farming points. I wanted to get Juggernaut first, but as I was running low on ammo, I decided to make a risky decision and hit Pack-a-Punch first. After taking out the jumping jacks and getting more ammo, negating my risk anyway, I decided to stay the course and pack a punch the PDW. It's a powerful points machine, so I figured it'd be more useful than the AN-94. Seriously, the wall weapons and slick fire on Die Rise are S tier. At the end of the round, in a long time of waiting, I grabbed Juggernog from the elevator, which was the third machine. Another round of killing zombies on the roof passed by, and man, I have to say, I miss the sound pack a punched guns made back in the day. There was something so satisfying about the very loud pew 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 that you really don't get even as early as Black Ops 3. But let me know in the comments, which Pack-a-Punch gun sound do you like better? The World at War to Black Ops 2 one? Or maybe even the Black Ops 3 or 4 one? Or even the newer ones, it's a lot muted. Anyway, this Die Rise camo is pretty cool too. But eventually I was able to head over around the antenna on the roof and pick up Mule Kick, the fourth perk machine. This is where my lack of knowledge almost bit me in the ass. I was now stuck in this tight area with minimal ammo and even fewer points, so I prayed that I wouldn't get killed. Thankfully I was able to worm my way out of the corner, Sliquify zombies, and grab a max ammo. I was in an identical situation on round 10, but this time I at least had a good amount of ammo, so I hung out by this elevator before almost getting turned into chow mein. I opened the barrier and returned to the faithful roof and proceeded to farm until I had over 3,000 points. A lot more waiting for the elevator and the root beer shelf showed its beautiful face as I forked over the 2,000 points for double tap. Round 11 was another jumpy round. If you're familiar with Die Rise, you know that if I don't miss a shot or just melee these things to death, I can get a free perk. However, I didn't end up doing this because I needed to use all the machines in one game and I'm at four perks and I'm gonna have to die anyway. After killing the jumpers, round 12 involved, you guessed it, more killing on the roof. We're down to needing only two perks, Speed Cola and the greatest perk jingle of all time, Who's Who. This meant that I needed to save 5,000 points and then head over to the original skyscraper. I learned that the elevators that the machines spawn in change, but the skyscraper they spawn in doesn't. The rest of this round was the main reason why I, and I think a lot of others don't like this map, waiting. I let this zombie slap me around to make him feel like he did something before rebuying quick revive for safety and picking up speed cola. After cutting out six more minutes of footage of me just running around in circles, I made it back to the top floor and bought Who's Who, the seventh and final machine on unlocking the achievement. Time to get spooky on Mob of the Dead. Full lockdown is Mob's rarest achievement with a 1.32% completion. To unlock this, Brutus has to complete his patrol, aka lock down every powered perk machine, crafting table, the plane, and the mystery box at the same time. I started as usual, cosplaying as Danny Phantom, zapping open a cage, and saving myself from dying. I took advantage of the double points that was in the joint for money laundering, and made my way out of spawn. I bought the MP5 before sticking my finger in a socket, zapping the key and this other power meter before saving myself again, grabbing the key. My middle child has done a great job in the past couple weeks with his potty training, but I haven't on mine, so I need to do laundry. I electrocuted myself yet again and powered up the laundry machine as well as double tap, saving myself from getting an STI from all the blood on the floor and did the laundry for the plane part. It's important to note with the plane that you actually don't need to fully build it for the achievement, you just need to build one part. I guess the laundry machine spawned a bunch of zombies, but unlike later games that would blue ball you by not giving you points, these zombies were kind enough to pad my 401k that I emptied because the tungsten tripler was in Black Ops 4. I opened a couple more doors before laughing my ass off at Finn's pain noises. I couldn't afford anything else to my knowledge, so I went ahead and ended the round. Money's a serious business on Mob of the Dead, so I spent some time in the cafeteria building up points before I went on a journey of self-discovery. And by self, I mean finding the acid gap parts. Confession time. The first time I ever played Mob was last year when I picked up BO2 on the Xbox sale. So I don't know where everything is, and this map doesn't play too similarly to Blood of the Dead, which is one I know a lot better. But after some dumbassery, I found the piece, strategically killed the zombie so I could afford the 2,000 point gate on top, then went back into ghost mode. This allowed me to zap the gondola as well as electric cherry. Honestly, this map is pretty damn creepy. I'm listening back with some good 
quality headphones while I'm writing the script, and I'm catching so many little unnerving sounds and songs that I don't hear when I'm playing on the TV. Forget not wanting to scare my kids with the game noises. What about me? I went back to the cafeteria to build up more points before taking it down while trying to sneak in between a couple of zombies. In all my years of playing Black Ops 2, I seem to never remember that these guys will windmill you enough to make Don Quixote jealous. Realizing I was still a large amount of points short from my previous attempts trying this, I spent another round in the cafeteria mowing down zombies. I'm gonna catch a lot of heat for saying this, but if I'm not honest with you watching, then I'm just another zombies YouTuber. I don't really find this map all that fun. Yes, the atmosphere, characters, and story are fantastic. Top 5 atmosphere in zombies history, no doubt about it. But it's blatantly obvious that Mob of the Dead was built mainly with the story in mind as opposed to the gameplay. Setting up as a slog and honestly, probably even more tedious than something like Zetsubo no Shima. I took the gondola down to the docks and grabbed the first shield parts. I became a spirit in order to activate Juggernog and the generators before barely having enough time to free myself. I decided to gamble on my skill, usually not the right move, and grab Juggernog instead of going back up to the gondola with the points I had. The risk paid off, however, as I didn't try to hold hands with any of the zombies. I returned to the main part of the map to kill more zombies for points. I was honestly planning to cut out a lot of the setup on all the maps on this video to make it shorter, but so much of this map is just the setup, there'd be absolutely nothing to include. Fortunately for me, this MP5 is still putting in the work and giving me plenty of points. I wanted to save a zombie in order to make some more progress on getting things set up, but I decided to grab the nuke and end the round since he was already shot. Black Ops 2 zombies are total divas and bleed out if you even fart in their direction. After plenty of wandering around and waiting for my damn phone to load because I had eight open tabs on how to find shit in Mob of the Dead, I found the two missing shield pieces in the generator room and where the plane piece falls down respectively. The latter required a bit of sneaky moves, but like sneaking to the kitchen for more double stuff Oreos without letting my kids see, I managed. Into the infirmary I went, wandering around until I found the bottle of acid for the acid gap. A couple of YouTube videos later and I opened up the warden's office. I made a mistake by not going into the office and turning on the speed cola machine because I had plenty of time to do so before dying. I looked up another video on how to get to the roof because it said it was a powered door, so I went ghost to do that and activate Deadshot. After reviving myself, I headed back to the warden's office, electrocuted myself again in order to activate Speed Cola. I then built the shield, the acid get kit, and picked up double tap for the extra protection on the Brutus round. Real quick warning for anyone who gets motion sickness, you might want to look away for this next part. There's going to be a lot of screen shaking. Round 9 started off like most of the rounds in the game, hanging out in the cafeteria and killing zombies. That is, until the VIP of the match showed up. Brutus chased me around in the cafeteria a few times, for some reason deciding that Finn's voice was much too sexy to ignore, before finally locking down the shield. As I made my way up the stairs, I thought, thank goodness my wife went to bed, because holy fuck, this screen shaking is too much. He locked down Electric Cherry in the Acid Gat Kit. I made my way into the showers and towards the Citadel, leading Brutus to the double tap machine to lock it down. Looping back a bit, I went down the Citadel tunnels, keeping him fairly close so he didn't despawn and jump scare me later, before leading him outside. Turns out he's a breast guy because he locked down Jug tighter than a high schooler with his first real girlfriend. Back up the tunnel we went before crossing over to the other side of the prism and into the warden's office, where Prison Mike here locked down the mystery box and speed cola. You, my friend, would be the bell of the ball. Finally, I made my way back over to the infirmary, let Brutus knock down the most OP perk ever Deadshot Daquiri, and added a plane piece so he could lock down the plane and complete full lockdown. Buried is my favorite map on this game due to the yeehaw factor. Awaken the Gazebo is this map's rarest achievement with 1.24% completion rate. You need to pack a punch on round one without using the bank or the weapon locker. Now how the hell are you supposed to do that, you ask? Use the Game Shark Pro on N64. Actually, the answer is seriously a shit ton of resets until you get good buys. Slug. At least the buried game over music is an all-time great. I loaded into the map and immediately jumped down the hole and drew the Remington on the wall. Thankfully this game I was blessed with the paralyzer on my first box hit. I proceeded to methodically eliminate zombies with the classic seven shots to the dick and a knife. Using my finger 11 wonder weapon, I flew up onto the roof and turned on the power. Next I flew inside the gunsmith and grabbed the first chalk piece. After drawing the first weapon, I freed the giant who everyone calls Leroy but is actually named Arthur. The chalk is the key to unlocking this achievement. Every time you draw a weapon on a wall, you get a thousand points, the last one giving you two thousand. Honestly, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through this because it's not exactly top tier cinema. I drew one weapon by the jail cell, one up the stairs by the box, one in the courthouse using the paralyzer to get up there, and one on the outside of the upper level of the saloon. I gave Mr. Morgan here a big bottle of booze so he can mindlessly crash into the wreckage to free up the church. He reminds me of a couple of my college roommates who pissed on the floor after getting drunk. After his disorderly conduct, 
ended, I grabbed the AN-94 off the wall since I had enough points before drawing the final weapon on the upper lever of the church. Now, I don't know what denomination of Christianity this is, but in my parish, you don't usually draw guns on the walls. I left the church and flew over the barrier and opened up Luigi's Mansion. The luck part of this game is over, now it's time for some skill. I need to make sure these lovely ladies don't touch me or else they'll take 2,000 points and I'll have to restart this. Again. It happened to me twice, I freely admit it. This time though, I was able to shoot these ghosts, cheat my way through the maze by flying over the gates with the paralyzer, before pack-a-punching it and awakening the gazebo. Only one more achievement to go. The last achievement of the video is on Origins, so get your likes ready. Saving the day, all day, is the rarest zombies achievement in Black Ops 2, and is the only one below 1% achievement with 0.64%. Yes, even the turned achievements are higher. I need to revive another player four different ways in one game. As I load into the game, you probably notice the split screen. Since it is a co-op achievement, there is nobody I would rather complete this with more than the most integral person to both my life and my zombie's history, my wife. For reference, I'm on top and she's on bottom, and I know that joke writes itself. We start the game by picking up the Max's brain and immediately start Generator 1. Again, this makes me feel uneasy because I'm a Catholic killing Templar zombies, but whatever. Admittedly, we had a number of temps before this one. We usually play Black Ops 3 together, so getting used to the two hit down took some adjustment. Fortunately, I was able to quickly revive my wife the first way, without any perks. She even repaid me in kind just a minute later. After two rounds in the spawn room, we made our way towards Generator 3, picked up a shield piece, and picked up the AK-74U from the wall. Through our previous failures, we found a strategy that was working for us, at least up until point of death. It's like parenting. You'll make dumbass decisions from time to time, but you can always get it right later. After turning on the generator and doing math so precise that had I used it in high school, I would have gotten an A and my mother's approval, we made our way out to the main part of the map. Our plan was simple at the start. Hang out around Generator 4 in order to buy Juggernaut. My wife took a down and I almost followed by jumping straight into a zombie, but thankfully he wasn't feeling affectionate that day, so I could save her. Since one of the four methods is to revive a player with the ultimate staff, I wanted to build the wind staff, so I jumped into the first robot's foot. I contemplated using what points we had to open up a barrier and start another generator, but I knew it would be a lot better to get Juggernaut, which we both did on round 6. We both purchased the trusty MP40 near the end of round 7 before heading over to Generator 5, grabbing the wind staff disc, and ending the round back near Generator 4. If you know Origins, you know what happens on round 8. The Panzer Soldat nearly crushed me before we got to work on these zombies. We didn't plan it this way, but we got separated with me heading down the tank path and my wife getting pushed into the wind tunnel. This ended up being a blessing because it gave us a more manageable number of zombies to deal with each, and I could handle the Panzer. After terminating his life support and picking up the fire staff piece, we went back to turn on Generator 2. A serious question for those who dunk on transit for having to build the power switch but praise Origins. Why is turning on power six times and having zombies that can turn it off not as bad or even worse than building one power switch? We dragged our asses all the way across the map to the church to look for a Maxis drone part, each taking one of the paths. But we came up empty, so we ended the round back at the burial mound. We killed plenty of zombies and had enough points to finish opening up what we needed, so I opened the burial mound, grabbed the grand phone and cosplay as Stevie Wonder for a bit until I found the Maxis drone part. Back at the church, I opened up the barrier to get to Generator 6 and grab the fire disc. After almost getting crushed by the robot because it was the wrong foot, I realized that the wind staff wasn't going to happen this game, so I decided to go with fire. My wife grabbed the last Maxis drone part while she waited for the robot foot to pass, and we turned on the last generator, unlocking an achievement for her, and picked up the last staff part. We built the Maxis drone and, finally coming to my senses, shot down the flaming plane to get the last part of the fire staff and headed over to the fire tunnel, grabbed the fire stone from the crazy place, built the zombie shield for extra protection, and built the staff at the burial mound. I guess before doing this, I forgot to tell my wife that I had to upgrade a staff, so uh, sorry again for that, darling. Since we were down here, I aligned the rings for later. It only took me 20 minutes to find all the switches this time. Progress! I went over to Generator 3 while my wife opted to stay in the area around Generator 4. I killed the Templars that were taking Generator 3 in order to get that sweet max ammo before entering the crazy place to upgrade the fire staff. This part of the process is where I'm most proud of my wife. Despite barely playing Black Ops 2 lately and almost never playing Origins before we tried this, she kicked serious zombie ass with the help of her trusty pack-punched MP40. I'm sure I've said this before, but she and I used to play Black Ops 1 until like 3 a.m. every night on Christmas break in 2010, which was a huge part in getting us closer together. Even when a Panzer Soldat showed up on round 11, she was able to get out of two hooks and killed the Mechanist, reference to all you Fallout fans. Halfway through through round 12, I finally finished killing zombies to fill up these urns and headed to the church to enter the fire code while
while my wife pack a punched her AK-74U. I have to confess, well, since I am in the church, that I haven't upgraded the fire staff before, so I had some issues entering the code because I didn't know that 4 was a blood streak. But thanks to everyone's favorite Terminator creating company Google, I figured it out. After shooting the burial mound's red ball, I deposited my staff in the crazy place and began filling it up while my wife opted to stay above ground. Unlike her, I don't have a pack of punched guns, so I had to play smart. Then again, I probably would have had one if I wasn't making her do all the hard work of killing zombies, but hey, it's just like housework. Once again, my wife handled the situation above ground with no problem, but by contrast, I had a few close calls, including here. These walls went up at the last possible second before I would have died. She accidentally picked up a nuke, but I guess it doesn't affect the Templars in the crazy place because none of them died. We were so close at this point, so I decided to leave in order to pack a punch my MP40. If I put my wife through this one more time, I'd be sleeping on the couch the night we recorded this. Round 14 is when it got real. My wife got sandwiched by two Panzer Soldats right as I finished my staff, which I didn't know that two would show up, so I couldn't warn her, and there was no way I could save her in time. I avenged her by melting one of them before realizing that the other noped off into the void. I guess he saw what happened to his buddy and decided he was out. The upgraded fire staff put in the work. Thankfully, I intercepted the Templars at Generator 3, so I was close enough to turn on Generator 1 and pick up Quick Revive. Unfortunately, this spawned my wife near spawn with nothing but a Mauser, but we linked up and stood in the mud in between the burial mound and Generator 5. After whiffing my first ultimate staff shot, I cleared some zombies and healed her in the second way, using Quick Revive. After she took another down, I tossed the Brain Boy Maxis so he could heal her the third way. Finally, she let another zombie take her to the ground, and my upgraded staff shot unlocked the achievement. We promptly celebrated by conceiving a fourth child. Uh, that's a joke. There we have it, Black Ops 2's rarest achievements on every map. Thank you all so much for your crazy support on all these achievement videos, and I look forward to suffering through more with you.